I think we're live. I think we're live. And I think I have this messed up a little bit. Let's, let's see if we can. Woo! A little too close. We're live. We have the picture. We have the lights. We have the sound. Everybody should be able to hear and see me, presumably. And we were also listening to a record this morning. It is Baby Thursday, Baby Friday. <laughs> it's actual Thursday. It is Baby Friday, which is a thing I'm trying to get started. I mean, nobody wants to wait on Friday, so let's bring it forward, you know, like half a day. Just half a day. Baby Friday. Um, focus is off. Sound is good. I think I was just sitting too too close, so I had to back up to get the focus going. Um, well, it's, it's a learning experience for everybody. It's a learning experience for everybody. We have new cameras, new equipment. Um, I think the focus is good now if I sit back here. Uh, Baby Friday, listening to a record. What record are we listening to today? We are listening we're listening, I was, we, the royal we in the techno lair, it is just me uh, down here in the basement, um, listening to this record right here, which I think is really cool because look, it is it's legitimately like a pretty record. It's got um, art inside of the record, embedded in the vinyl. It is so cool looking. Um, this is a, a 45. 45 single, so from, from before, before my time, these are used to be how we passed out singles. Now we just send you a Spotify link, but it's by a band called Stranger Cat. Um, and it's got two songs on it, one on side A, one on side B, and that's it. Also, you have to change your record player to 45 revolutions per minute, 45 RPM. I had mine set at 33 and a third because I've been playing a bunch of 12 inch vinyl. And that's normally what their speed is. 45 is a little faster. And so everything sounded a little bit slow until I figured it out. But the Oscope Wizard also is able to work his record player, thankfully. Um, so I have uh, some hipster water down here to drink. It's also Baby Thursday, so I have my good and plenties ready to eat. And wanted to talk about a funny thing that happened the other day. So it is May the 14th. On March the 17th, that was the last time I was outside. I drove a car on a road. I participated in normal society, and then I became a hermit. So now I am a hermit for nearly two straight months. It has been many days. How many days is that? 17 to 14? Assume 30 days, 57 days, 57, 58 days, 58, let's say, let's say 60 days. 60 days inside of my little bubble. I only go as far as I can run or as far as I can bike. Um, and yet, yet, I walked outside this week. Let me show you what I found outside this week. Get a little closer. See if I can get the uh, focus closer. I want to show this one little thing real quick, if I can. Uh, of course, I didn't set it up right because I'm the Oscope wizard, not the videographer wizard. Let's open this. Okay, see if I turn this on, what does it see? Oh, that. Um, that was a, a little bit of uh, playing that we did. This. Uh, <laughs> The other day, let me see if I can find, there I go, now I found myself. Uh, but this, this, I found this. This was on my door. Seriously? Seriously. This house has not been unoccupied for 60 days. It has had f some occupation for every hour of every day. And yet, yet, I managed to walk outside of my door and find a door tag from from FedEx saying that they couldn't find me. Sorry, sorry, we missed you. We wish we wish we had seen you for 60 days. I've been here. 
What is, is FedEx employing ninjas now that creep through the grass and, and hurl themselves at the door, slap the door tag on, and run away into the shadows? I mean, this is, it is, I guess FedEx is now just employing an army of ninjas to drop door tags off because that is literally the only way they could have possibly not found us, um, is if they were trying not to find us. Funny story, it actually turns out that this guy was trying to do a pickup a pickup that I had scheduled a week before, um, and he was finally getting around to picking up. But I mean, it was like a whole comedy of errors. Uh, luckily, not a big deal in the grand scheme of things, not a big deal at all, but I would say it is that. It is definitely that. Um, that happens. So what are we doing today? We are... <laughs> Chat says they do want FedEx ninjas. I, I do think it would be an interesting turn of events if FedEx did employ actual ninjas to deliver the packages and were like super sneaky and suddenly you had to play like this game of hide and seek with your FedEx driver to catch the package and you had to snatch the package from them and there was these big battles that ensued and it was sort of like a crouching tiger, hidden dragon. We were jumping through the trees and... Um, I wouldn't be very good at it. I suspect that I would not get nearly as many deliveries as I do now. Also, FedEx may go out of business. So, there's that. Uh, <laughs> main scene, let's get to the business of today. I forgot to hit my, <laughs> my start button. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to play hide and seek with your packages, you ship them via USPS. That is true. Uh, we had a whole saga with the USPS here where I live. Um, we had uh, many packages disappearing via the USPS, and it was a whole ordeal that made the news. It was very big, very big news here because it turns out that the USPS is not a place where packages are supposed to disappear. But I think they might have had a bad apple. It only takes one bad apple to ruin a lot. And that happened at this particular post office, sadly. Um, what are we doing today? We're talking near field probes. We're talking HZ-15. It is part three. We are beating this dead horse. Uh, we have talked about near field probes now three times on the show. Today, we are going to wrap it up. I have an agenda all pre prepared. This is the closest thing to magic that I own, part three. Let's turn it on so you can see it. The closest thing to magic that I own, part three. Also, it probably should say, this joke is old and stale and only your mom laughed. That's what, that's what the actual title is. This joke is old and stale and only your mom laughed, I noticed that my mom on uh, social media posted something that was like kind of funny and she said, uh, she said, interesting sense of humor, which I think might actually mean not funny. Not actually funny is what I took that to mean. Uh, fair enough, fair enough, it, it probably wasn't funny. It, I mean, it, it was objectively not funny if, uh, if she didn't think it was funny. Um, today, we are using these near field probes, so I haven't actually opened up this kit. Inside of this kit are a whole bunch of near field probes. Um, we got a whole slew of them, which is kind of neat about this kit. If you get the HZ-15 kit, it comes with not one near field probe, not two near field probes, but one, two, three, four, five near field probes. That's, that is a hog's wallop of near field probes is what that is. Hogs wallop, that is a super southern saying. Um, I'm not sure exactly what a hogs wallop is. Hogs wallop, so a wallop is like a slap. A hog is a boy pig. So are you slapping a boy pig? What is a hogs wallop? It means a lot. Um, yeah, we say things in the south, but then when you, when you think about them, it doesn't, some of them don't make a lot of sense. Uh, Super Southern, Super Southern, Super Southern Thursday, Super Southern Baby Friday. And we were using our near field probe 
um, to look at my handy dandy little USB charger. But I thought we could look at some other things today just to shake it up. Part three, we're going to see some more things. We're going to look at it on the oscilloscope. I do have the scope right here. Uh, let's see if we can turn the scope on so you can see it. This is, we do have a scope in the background. We're going to get to that. Um, but I have this. This is my uh, hair, hair razor, hair shears. We are all becoming intimately familiar with these, most likely. If you have decided to not adopt the shaggy, hairy look, if you are going for the, the uh, groomed and tight look, you probably are familiar with these. Uh, I have this, which is a little mini USB keyboard that I use all the time. Um, and then uh, this, Bluetooth speaker. Got them. So I thought we could look at some different things besides just the USB charger. But while I have the USB charger like all set up with my handy probe holder, I do say the word handy a lot. Mmm. Somebody else has some, some wall shears. Yeah. Making a pro choice. Pro choice there. I think you've 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 gotten a good good set of shears there, kind sir. Um so let's turn on the oscilloscope. So I am still looking at this Bluetooth, or sorry, this USB charger, not a Bluetooth charger. It's not that fancy. That would be bananas if it was a Bluetooth charger. This thing charges via Bluetooth. Um, but I'm going to charge. Let's see what I got to charge. Oh, you know what? I was using my phone earlier. I can charge my phone. Uh, it'll start drawing current. Now, let's go to the scope. First things first on the oscilloscope, what do we have to do? We have to reset the oscilloscope because we don't know what the last guy was doing. So let's start there. I'm going to start with the power disconnected from my phone as well. And let's zoom in a little bit so we have a little bit more sensitivity. Um, and I want to do an FFT. So the other day we realized that 2.4 gigahertz, that is just my Wi-Fi. This 570 megahertz, that is my wireless microphone. Um, not a whole lot we could do about those spikes. Let's go down to the 100 megahertz area though and start looking at some stuff. Now I have these huge big spikes and that is because my resolution bandwidth is so fat. So each uh, bin of this FFT is 1 megahertz. And I am going from 0 to 100 megahertz, meaning that I only have 100 bins, which is not a lot. So let's turn down this resolution bandwidth a little bit. Um, down to, let's say, 10 kilohertz. Um, now, down here in the 20 megahertz range, I have something. How do I know that it's 20 megahertz? Well, that's a good question. How does one know that it's 20 megahertz? Um, let's turn on a cursor. So we'll turn on a cursor. We'll tell it that we're doing this on math. I don't think I actually turned on the cursor. <laughs> let's actually turn on the cursor. That will make it a lot easier to use. Get my cursors out here on the screen. Put my cursor one right here. Cursor one right there. 22 megahertz. Um, what? Why does resolution bandwidth decrease the noise floor um, of my oscilloscope? Well, one thing is the resolution bandwidth is the size of the frequency bin of the FFT. So if I go back into my FFT setup really quickly, and we are going to be stressing my uh, FFT knowledge a little bit, that's okay. I turn this back up to 100 megahertz. So I have on this graph 0 to 100 megahertz graphed. That is what my, what's my, my frequency band is. My resolution bandwidth is defining how big each one of the frequency bins are. So in this case, I have 1 megahertz for each frequency bin, meaning that I have 100 frequency bins. So if a signal is kind of wide, um, it might take up a whole bunch of bins. If it is super narrow, 
it might look like it is wider because I'm not able to resolve down to a super narrow signal with such a wide um, bin. It's kind of like if you're trying to color inside the lines and you use the fat ended crayon and you don't sharpen that tip, you're not going to be able to get as much detail. So let's shrink the resolution bandwidth and get a sharper tip on our crayon. So I'm going to make the resolution bandwidth smaller. So now 10 kilohertz. So if I go from 1 megahertz down to uh, 100 kilohertz, now I went from 100 bins to 1,000 bins. Now I'm going to go up to 10,000 bins at 10 kilohertz. So now I have a very sharp marker or a very sharp crayon, and now I can see um, more detail. And also, the noise floor lowers because when I have more energy in a smaller bin, it pushes that bin up. It's like when you push the water level up. But now I'm looking at a smaller bin so the noise doesn't push the bin quite as high. And so the, the noise floor effectively drops, at least on the screen. Um, I'm not changing physics or anything. I'm just graphing it differently. Uh, this is kind of a statistical anomaly, and we have all learned a lot about what you can do with statistics. You can make them look any old way you want, um, and the same kind of goes for an FFT. You can make it look how you need it to look when you're trying to use the tool properly. So down here at 20 megahertz, I can see that it is popping around. I don't have my device plugged in, so if I go back, um, you can see my phone is not plugged in and is not charging. So if I go back to this FFT and I plug the phone in, so now, boom, I plug the phone in. You can see it's charging. The, cha the shape changed. Let's get a little bit more, um, <laughs> allegedly the water analogy helped explain it. I <laughs> feel like you're being nice like my mom. That was interesting funny. Uh, <laughs> Let's change the frequency span down. So I know that um, I've got some energy down at 20 megahertz. So let's make 30 megahertz my top end. Um, and let's drop my resolution bandwidth even further. Oops, going the wrong way. Let's drop it further. Um, and I'm slowing down a little bit, so maybe I need less memory, less memory. Turn my memory down so I'm not having to crunch quite as much data. Boom, speed it back up. Uh, what did I do? I did something weird to my, uh, my FFT, didn't I? Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry. I'm changing the wrong buttons. Start frequency, 0 megahertz. Stop frequency, 30 megahertz. I want to look from the bottom to 30 megahertz. Uh, so here we are, 20 megahertz. When I zoom in, I don't see quite as much energy there. I'm also using a smaller bin, so I don't see quite as much energy. Where I see most of the energy when I start zooming in to a lower and lower frequency is down here at the bottom. And what you'll find out is if I unplug it, all my, uh, so I physically unplug the power adapter from my phone and all this energy goes away down here at the bottom and I plug it in and the energy comes back. That's because the, uh, the charger is active. Uh, and you can see that at 20 megahertz, a little bit pops up, but nothing like it was when I was using such a wide crown. So, Sometimes when you have energy spikes on your FFT, you can crank your resolution bandwidth down and make sure that it's, it's not just a tiny narrow pulse that's causing this uh, blast just because you're using the wrong resolution bandwidth. Um, I want to go further down in frequency. Uh, so instead of 30 megahertz, let's make my stop frequency, let's see keep going down. Let's say one megahertz. Boom. Here we go. Now here is your EMI. This is, this is, this is your problem area of EMI. Now I have turned off the uh, labels, but let's turn the labels back on really quickly. Um, show labels. Over here I have power levels. So I can see these spikes down here at the bottom are like minus 70 dBm. That's pretty low, so that's not a huge big deal. Um, and I, I can also see, and I had turned off the labels because this one label was kind of in my way, but I can see the first spike, the biggest spike, the primary spike is down here at 47 kilohertz. So I would hazard to guess 
that this USB charger has a switching frequency, an internal um, switch mode power supply that switches at about 47 kilohertz. And that is what is causing this noise because I can see not charging, charging. And you can see it kind of find itself and then snap into charge. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. What is the right word to call the spikes? Is it spike, spur, transient, signal, bob? <laughs> um, that's, a good, that's a good question. I would call it the... Um, I guess it depends on the uh, the application, but right now I'd call it the the frequency. <laughs> I would call it the frequency peaks, the frequency energy, and then these are the harmonics. All these other spikes that look kind of like um, a comb. Uh, so I'm thinking peaks, frequency peaks. Uh, man, we got we got some debate in the chat. Um, so. Fundamental, down here, 47 kilohertz, or, well, now it moved down to 37 kilohertz. Maybe it moves around a little bit. Um, and then I have another one right here at 72 kilohertz. Oh, yeah, so, oh, 72, that would indicate 36, right? 36. I wonder if that spike moves every time I change it. So, let's, so I've unplugged it, I've replugged it. So I can see that it is kind of tuning itself. Wow. That is kind of neat. So now it is at 47 kilohertz, so it does move. Um, it is not a wireless charger. It is a wired charger uh, that uses like a magnetic uh, connector. So it's, it's like a little, it's like a little regular charger. There are pins inside of this. Uh, let me see if I can focus on it. There we go. There's pins inside of this connector right here. Oh, wrong finger. I don't want to offend anybody. Pins inside of there, and then I plug it in, magnet around it with pins in the center, uh, and then the thing starts charging. So it is a physical connection being made. It's not a wireless connection, but it is choosing different frequencies, uh, which is kind of uh, fascinating. Anyway, when you get into engineering, uh, you can really sidetrack yourself in the details, and I guess that is what... Uh, that's one of the things that happens in test engineering is you sidetrack yourself in the details, and that's fine. That's fine. That's a fine place to be. Uh, keep your brain active and always learning. I want to get the wireless power supply out of the way, or this not wireless power supply, out of the way. So I'm going to unplug it, change my setup a little bit, uh, get all these wires out of the way, out of the way. Everything's out of the way. <laughs> Toss it over on the chair. I can move it uh, a little bit. Let's look at Bluetooth speaker. Um, so I have a Bluetooth speaker here. It's a Bluetooth speaker that I've had for many years. Let's see what it looks like in um, wireless space using my EMI Near Field Probe. Uh-oh, my, my camera went away. My camera went away. Where did my camera go? Come back, camera. There we go. Camera went away. Get a plug. Get a plug. Um, so I'm going to send some music over to this wireless Bluetooth speaker. Let's turn it on first. Make sure we got... Is it going to turn on? Is it dead? Oh my goodness. On a positive note, I have a charger here, which is crazy. I can't believe my speaker is dead. This speaker is n literally never dead. I charge it all the time, and it would be dead right now. Let's see if it'll, if it'll wake up. It says it's charging. Have it plugged in. Who knows? Maybe we will not look at my wireless Bluetooth speaker, unfortunately. Um, okay. Who knows what happened there? Let's try my wireless mouse. <laughs> engineers checked everything. <laughs> you know what the problem is with that wireless Bluetooth speaker? Is I have been getting in the hot tub sometimes three times a day, and I have been listening to the acoustic classics on Spotify every day in the hot tub, and so it is uh, like super chill. I would say it's worth it that the speaker's not uh, charged, but that is why the speaker is not charged. 
Also, it doesn't appear like it is uh, turning on after receiving charge. So we're going to let it charge for a second. That's okay. I have this other wireless Bluetooth. Um, well, not Bluetooth. I don't know what it is, but it's a wireless um, keyboard. And look, I can see if I put my keyboard close to this uh, probe, we can actually see it pop up on this display here. You can see it popping up over there. You see the little signals popping in and out, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, so let's get this keyboard a little bit closer. Let's get my probe. There we go. Found the radio. You see, you can see the radio signal on my oscilloscope. We can set up the trigger so we're effectively triggering on it. Um, let's do myself a favor and adjust the hysteresis to manual. So we have a little bit more sensitivity on my trigger. There we go. Maybe even turn the sensitivity up on my channel. Now, now we're doing it. So now I have this, the radio probe. So if I go back to my setup, you can see why a probe holder is super handy. So the probe holder I can set up to be like directly on the radio signal there. So I can tell that inside of this unit right here is the radio transmitter. Uh, and I can tell that because when I put my probe over it, suddenly on the scope screen, the transmitter pops up. Now I'm not seeing anything on my FFT right now because I'm looking at zero to one megahertz. And uh, in general, uh-oh, hold on. Oh my goodness. It's, it's five minutes left, guys. Five minutes left. Five minutes, just five minutes left. Uh, so let's go back to our radio and take a, a last crack at it here. And get back. If I can. Boom. Here we go. We're looking at the, the, the radio. Uh, we have the FFT set up incorrectly, but that's okay. Let's delete this FFT for a, a moment. Get out of the way. Make sure we have our signal triggered. So we have this triggered properly. I can see the computer keyboard communicating to the scope here. Uh, I can press keys. That doesn't seem to make a big difference in the length of the burst. And that's oh, a little bit, a little bit. Um, let's do an FFT of channel one. Let's make the stop frequency four gigahertz. Um, quick channel one. Let's turn down the resolution bandwidth to megahertz so I have a gigahertz of um, gigahertz or megahertz of resolution bandwidth four gigahertz of span I can see stuff at 2.4 gigahertz oh, there it is so that is my radio right there so let's make a center frequency of 2.4 gigahertz in a span that's kind of narrow whoop and I made it kind of wide let's make it kind of narrow and zoom in a little bit and see what we see <laughs> look at that huge bot we're gonna call him Bob now huh that's cool that's cool that huge spike at 2.4 gigahertz man uh, where my radio is transmitting, you can see that this really, oh, there it goes, oh, and there's back, oh, and it's back, and it's back, and it's cool. Um, uh, one of the really cool things that you can do with an oscilloscope is I could try to trigger on that spike. So I could draw a zone here and say, you know what? I only want you to trigger when I go into that zone. So boom, I have drawn a box on the screen. Every time the FFT goes into this box, the scope triggers. So I can see that this spike corresponds to this burst. And that is my wireless keyboard communicating, communicating, communicating to my oscilloscope. Um, and I'm using uh, an oscilloscope to look at this and not some kind of spectrum analyzer. So I don't, I don't know why, uh, I don't know why you'd bother with the spectrum analyzer, guys. Seriously, get oscilloscopes. Stop messing around with spectrum analyzers. Get oscilloscopes. Get your your job 
done. Another cool thing that I can do um, with my oscilloscope is uh, let's let's hit a single here and stop the thing. Let's delete this zone. I want to make a zoom box. Let's see if I can let's see if I can successfully accomplish this. Let's make a zoom box here, uh, and I want my FFT instead of being the entire capture. Let's let's gate it with this zoom. So now my FFT is only going to be showing stuff in the zoom box allegedly. If I move this over, oh, and it's not going to do it, is it? It's not going to do it. Of course not. Let's delete that. Let's do an FFT of my zoom over here. 2.4 gigahertz center. We're trying to make this thing work like it's supposed to. little bit less res bandwidth here. Let's see if we can make this happen. All right, so I'm going to move my zoom. You know, move my zoom. There we go. There we go. Moving my zoom, moving my zoom, moving my zoom. Is it going to do it? Oh my goodness, guys. Why? Am I gating it with my zoom? Uh I can't get it to work because I'm apparently not an O-scope wizard. Not a Zoom wizard. I'll tell you what. It's probably because it's Baby Friday. And that's okay. Um, it is Baby Friday. We have pounded, we have pounded um, near-field probes into the dirt. Pounded them. We have used all our jokes about near-field probes. Uh, what jokes that there were. Um, We've looked at a, a USB charger. We have looked at uh, a dead Bluetooth speaker, which was not as much fun to look at as one would think. We have looked at the wireless keyboard. Oh, wait a second. There was a suggestion to try to do another acquisition. Um, let's try it. Let's try it really quickly, really quickly. We'll do one more acquisition here, make it happen. Uh, let's do a, you know what? I have an undo button. I can just undo it and undo it and undo it. There we go. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> let's see. Now if I do single, Well, I have my, I probably should have put back my, um, oh, I probably should have turned back on my keyboard here and let's see if we can find it. There we go. There we go. Now we got the single and, oh, there we go. Now we got our zoom working with our, with our, um, FFT. If I go back over here where there's not a lot of energy, my spike disappears. Move over to some energy and the spike pops up. Here we are. That is kind of a neat thing so I can see how long my spike lasted. And then as I move past my burst, you can see the spike kind of uh, dissipates and gets tiny again uh, because now I just have residual information or residual energy there. Uh, and so that is one more thing that you can do with an oscilloscope. It's really easy because you have the time domain and you have the frequency domain all in one capture, uh, and you can do a lot of really cool, powerful things with it. That was my five minutes. I kind of went over, I think it is. Yeah, I went over. Sorry, I apologize. Thank you so much for watching today to the Oscope Wizard. Thank you so much. Um, oh, one more thing. One more thing. Uh, thank you so much to my friend Sarah, who was very concerned about my mental well-being, and she sent me this uh, essential oil diffuser that I've been using to fill my room with the scent of joy, which is actually a pretty good scent, um, and it has been really calming, so I've been experimenting. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. Um, I don't know all the nerds in the world, but I'd love to meet them, so please share this with a nerd in your life, and I'm going to be hanging out in the chat for a little while longer, and uh, have a great baby Thursday, guys. Bye!